Today's brief has been created with open source information readily available on the internet as well as books. However, take it with a pinch of salt because some aspects have been kept secret due to said country's official secrets act. And sometimes Wikipedia is probably the best place to find the information. So sit back, relax, and let's get into today's briefing. The Project 22350 class frigate is designed as a replacement to the aging Krivak class as well as the two Nistroshimi class frigates currently in service with Russia's fleets. Designed by the Northern Fleet Bureau at St. Petersburg, they would design a multi-role frigate for use by all fleets of the Russian Navy. The ships would be designed between 2001 and 2003, with the final design being chosen in 2005. This class of vessel is designed to be a 15 strong class, displacing 5,400 tonnes. They would be 135 metres long, a beam of 16 metres and have a draft of 4.5 metres. Power plant would consist of two cruising diesel engines and two gas turbines, battling two shafts for a top speed of 29.5 knots and a cruise speed of 14 knots. Range would be 4,850 nautical miles at 10 knots, or 30 days based on provisions for her 210 officers and personnel. The ship's radars, sonar and sensor fit consists of four Polyment Redu multifunctional golf band radar located on the foremast. This has a 360 degree detection range of up to about 80 nautical miles. One FERC E early warning echo band radar located atop the foremast. This also has 306 degrees of detection out to 70 nautical miles. Two Palmfond navigational India band radar located one port and one starboard. These have a 240 degree coverage on each beam of the ship and these have a range of about 50 nautical miles. One MR231 navigational India band radar. This is located atop of the bridge. This has a range of about 50 nautical miles as well. One plank shave fire control India band radar located on the foremast. This has 270 degrees coverage and is capable of locking onto targets out to 76 nautical miles. Two hotshot fire control Juliet band radars located atop of the close-in weapon systems. These associates to the SAN-24 Verbra service-to-air missile system. One bullnose hull-mounted low-frequency active and passive sonar. Range of detection is estimated to be about 6.5 nautical miles. One Minotaur variable depth low-frequency active and passive sonar with an expected range of about 40 nautical miles. Two TK-28 ESM cable detection about 500 nautical miles. This system also has a built-in laser warning system. Finally, 6 TK-28 ECM for offensive and defensive measures. This system works on the India and Juliet bands and is also the ship's onboard jamming system. The weapon systems of the ship consist of one AK-192 130mm 54 caliber main gun capable of shooting a fragmentation or high explosive shell out to 12 nautical miles. Two 14.5mm heavy machine guns capable of shooting out to 1 nautical mile. Four octuple vertical launch cells for SAN-21 Gambler service to air missile, capable of hitting targets out to 65 nautical miles. Two octuple vertical launch cells for SSN-26 Strobel, aka Onyx or Yakont, SSN-27 Sizzler, Calibre land attack cruise missiles, or SSN-33 Zircon hypersonic anti-ship missiles. Four quad Palmer close-in weapon systems fitted with the SAN-24 Verbra surface-to-air missile. This has a range of about 5.4 nautical miles. Two quad 13.1-inch torpedo tubes for the M15 anti-torpedo torpedo, or the Pekat NK ASW torpedo. Finally, the ship carries eight PK-10 decoy launchers. The ship carries six SR-50 chaff rounds and four SO. 50 flare rounds per launcher. In terms of aircraft facilities on board, the ship has a hangar for a single KA-27M Helix, as well as a flight deck to take said helicopter. The ship also holds 12 APR-3 and 24 APR-3 Mike ASW torpedoes, as well as 36 PLAB-250 depth charges for use on the helicopter.
Communication systems on board consist of secure HF comms out to 300 nautical miles, secure very high frequency comms out to 100 nautical miles but is limited with line of sight, secure HF data link out to 100 nautical miles, secure UHF comms out to 100 nautical miles all with 10 frequency channels, but the latter is again line of sight limited. Right, that's enough about specifications and capabilities of these ships. The first ship of the class would be laid down at Servania Werf Shipyards in St. Petersburg on February 1st, 2006, with statements from the Russian Prime Minister at the time, Sergei Ivanov, stating that the ship's construction was a priority and the ship would be commissioned by 2011. But like many promises from any government, that would prove to be false, and so the ship in reality would be launched on the 29th of October 2010. The second ship of the class would be laid down on November 26, 2009 and launched on December 12, 2014. Vessel 1 would be commissioned on July 28, 2018 as the Admiral Gorshkov, pennant number 454, originally pennant number 417. Vessel 2 would be commissioned on July 21, 2020 as the Admiral Kasatonov, pennant number 461. Vessel 3 would be laid down on February 1st, 2012 and launched on the 22nd of May, 2020. She is called the Admiral Golovko and she is expected to commission late this year and maybe early next year. Vessel 4 would be laid down on November 14th, 2013 and is currently under construction. This hull is called the Admiral Isakov. Vessels 5 and 6 would be laid down on April 23rd, 2019 as the Admiral Almiko and Admiral Chichagov respectively. Vessels 7 and 8 would be laid down on July 20th, 2020 and have been named the Admiral Yemeshev and Admiral Spiridonov. Hull 1 to 3 are part of the Northern Fleet, Hull 4 is instated and Hull 5 to 7 are part of the Pacific Fleets. Looking at the service careers of these vessels, We'll start off with the lead ship, the Admiral Gorshkov. The Gorshkov would start off her recorded career in December of 2017, when she would conduct sea trials in the North Sea near the UK waters over Christmas, resulting in, at the time, the Fleet Ready Escort, HMS St Albans, a Type 23 frigate, being actioned to shadow the ship before returning back to Severomorsk by the end of the year. The next year, in late July, the ship would be accepted into the Russian Northern Fleet, but on the 27th, the day before commissioning, she would make her debut at the St. Petersburg Naval Day Parade. She would remain in the vicinity of the Barents Sea, preparing for her first major operations until the end of the year. Her first operation would see her sail some 35,000 nautical miles, sailing on February 26, 2019, sailing with the ships Karma, a replenishment vessel, the support ship Elbrus, and the large ocean-going tugboat the Nikolai Chilka. They would make stops in Djibouti, Sri Lanka, Qingdao, Vladivostok, Ecuador, Havana, Cape Verde and Kronstadt before sailing back to Severomorsk for homecoming. In 2020, she would be the test bed for the Zircon missile firings over the North Cape and in the Barents Sea, where at least three tests were conducted, with one being misreported by Russia TV as, apparently, a Zircon launch, but in reality would actually be a Calibre launch. 2021 would see the ship at sea again, with the Gorshkov conducting ASW exercises in the Berent Sea as well as conducting Onyx firings in March, in company with an icebreaker, the Elbrus again, and the tugboat, the MB-110. The Admiral Kazatinov would be commissioned on July 21st, 2020, and put to sea by the end of the month for an anti-submarine warfare exercise in the Berent Sea, as well as conducting her first missile exercise in the White Sea where she fired a caliber land attack cruise missile against a land training target near Archangel. With this completed, the ship would prepare for her maiden deployment, sailing on December 30th with the tugboat, the Nikolai Chilka. Her deployment would take her to the Mediterranean, and a task group passed through the Strait of Gibraltar on January 14th and put into Algeria on the 18th. This was followed by Cyprus on the 26th, Greece on the 2nd of February, and Alexandria on the 16th. They would meet up with the tanker Vyazma, and in March you see the ships put into a Turkish naval base. The ships would leave here and it would be their return journey home. 
Ships called into Limassol on the 8th to the 10th of March, before putting back to sea and shattering the French LHD Tonnerre, which was transiting east from Crete. The end of the month would see the ships putting back into a Greek port before sailing back home, passing through the Strait of Gibraltar on April 1st for her two-week transit home. Current open source intelligence suggests that the Goshkov and Kazatanov are alongside in Severomorsk at the time of making this video. Hull 3 is fitting out, hulls 4 to 8 are under construction, hull 9 and 10 have yet to been laid down or named, but have been ordered. There has been a design release for a Super Gorshkov, but that is unconfirmed if this is going to be the Project 22350M. And as of yet, no orders have been made for an export version to the ship. So that's it guys, thank you very much for watching, hope you learned something new. Don't forget to like the video before you leave, leave a comment and uh, give a suggestion of what you think I should do next, as well as if you have a question you want me to answer, please put it in the comment section on the pinned post. Apart from that, if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, I recommend doing so, because I have some very interesting content coming out very soon. If you want to support the channel, there is a Patreon page, but that's entirely up to you. If you do so, there is some interesting perks to actually being a Patreon to the page. Apart from that, all you need to do is say thank you very much, have a nice day, and uh, here's a sneak peek at uh, next week's video.